Good morning, everyone. Um, thanks for coming to AR in Action and coming to see me speak. So as Ken was mentioning, I traveled around the world with Google Glass. Um, so I wanted to give you a little bit backstory of how that all happened, um, because it's quite an interesting story. So when I was in college, I ended up studying how technology impacts human interaction. Um, because when I was 13, I read this book called Feed by M.T. Anderson that talked about a world in which we have a chip in our bodies. I was like, what is that noise? <laughs> and um, advertising agencies control our, controlled our minds. So to me, this was the scariest thing that I could have ever read as a 13-year-old girl. And I knew that I had to be a part of whatever the future of mobile technology was because I didn't want this future to occur. So um, as I was graduating um, NYU, I, Google Glass had come out, and I was like, I need to get my hands on these, these are amazing. Um, so I ended up moving out to San Francisco and trying my first VR headset, um, getting a bunch of, try, trying a bunch of Google Glass, and I realized that which, and in whichever way possible, I needed to own my own. So when Google Glass announced that they were allowing every single person who had a Google Glass to invite three people, I casually emailed every single person that I knew or had met once upon a time, including Robert Scoble, where I was like, please give me your Google Glass invite. And he said no, but other, someone else said yes, fortunately. He was like, sorry, I uh, can't, can't do that. But I um, ended up buying them, and I actually, since I had just graduated from college, didn't really have that much money. So I used my tax rebate, which was exactly $1,600, and the Google Glass cost $1,500 plus tax. So I used all the money that I had on Google Glass. And I was like, cool, well, I don't really have a job, so I need to figure something else to do with this. Otherwise, like, I, once I got them, I was like, I feel kind of weird walking around New York. Um, it's like super nerdy, it doesn't feel right, um, but it's the first consumer wearable, like I need to do something with this. So I started Googling around and realized that nobody had traveled the world with it. And as I started to think about this concept, what I realized was that in the US, people, the press was so negative about Google Glass and like everywhere people were just like, Google Glass is for glass holes. And like it was just, th they were taking away from what was arguably like one of the like largest moments in technological history because this is the first time that people, like real consumers, were wearing something on their face that displayed something in front of them. Now people are saying like it wasn't true AR, it's a head of display, doesn't matter. It was the first consumer ocular device that people wore on the streets. Um, so put together a, a proposal. Within four days, I was fully sponsored to travel around the world. Um, I traveled to uh, Barcelona, Madrid, Paris, London, um, Berlin, uh, Dubai, Mumbai, and Goa. And the biggest learning from abroad was uh, taken from places like Dubai and India. They were the most excited about this technology. Um, they saw not just it just taking photos or a way to share about your life um, from a first person's perspective, but they saw the future. And they were like, I can use this for DIY projects. I'm so compelled to learn more about what this technology can do for the future. And they weren't looking at it as like, this is going to be the device that will be forever. They were like, this device will get smaller. And they saw all of the positive things about it that people in the US were just like, uh, it's, it's a bad device. Um, so I'm going to play the video quickly, um, but just on that note, Spectacles, which is now Snapchat's um, glasses that record video, probably wouldn't have been able to have such a great playbook had it not been for Google Glass. And um, all the future AR devices now know like what Google did and the way that they released it was technically incorrect, um, but somebody had to do that first. And so that's just a lesson for everyone. Um, as when you do something first, then it doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be right, but um, everyone else will learn from you, and so that's really important. So yeah, let's just play the video really quick. Okay, now it's recording a video. <laughs> Wait, no, I, yo, a really? she's working yeah. like, fuck <laughs> that. <laughs> oh, shit. Hey. And you know you feel crazy as well, because you know, just, like no one can see it. Hey, hey, how are you doing? 
So some of the content is recorded through Google Glass, other ones I've recorded through my camera. If everyone's looking at my eyes, they're, it's being recorded through Google Glass. Okay, okay, glass. Pero falta If you guys want to see it, just Sophia through glass, um, and I blogged about it in every single city um, to give further insight into how people reacted to it, and that's just SophiaThroughGlass.com. It's kind of funny watching it now. Like I, I watch so much VR content that I'm like, oh my god, the thing is so shaky. Like nobody could ever watch that back. Um, but I think with like recent technological innovations and stabilization, we'll we'll be better there. Uh, well, cool. Thanks. I'm Sophia. Um, thanks for your time. <laughs>